happy people i'm back with another video and today i'm going to be doing my first set of extra extra long luxury nails and so i am going to be doing an acrylic set and I recently hauled some acrylics from this company called Agalore & Co. And if you all have not checked that video out, you definitely should. Um, I got an acrylic bundle where I actually hauled 24 of their acrylics and swatched them all. So um, yeah, I will leave that video linked in the description um, as well as in the cards. But I really liked how these acrylics performed and I was super excited to give them a try. So I'm going to be sculpting my nails with this. I'm also going to be using a couple of extras to bring the set to life. So I have here some Gucci nail for oils this really cute gucci charm okay super adorable i'm gonna be going in with my first time using a pom-pom this is really cute so i'm gonna try that i got a little bit of bling here these here are my luxury charms i want to try to put to use as well i also have my foil glue as well as a gel liner because y'all know i've been loving these joss love liners this is everything i'm going to be using for today's set yeah y'all let's get into the set I am going to be going in with my McCart. Like I said, I believe these are 2X or either 3XL nail tips that I got during one of my Your Nail Lab um, subscription boxes. This is what they look like all sized out and ready to go. I am going to be going in with my Rose Peel Off method. If you all have not seen that video, I am going to leave a link down in the description box so you guys can check it out more in depth about how to prep your nails for acrylic application. Um, but essentially, I'm going to be going in with minimal prep, my Young Nails Protein Bond, my Maran Peel Off Base Coat, and then my Matte Top Coat. And that's going to prep my nails for my acrylic application that's going to last about a week, week and a half with easy removal. I'm going to do that off camera and I'll be right back. I just finished applying my nail tips and I did apply my nail tips with some regular nail glue. Um, I ended up using um, the one from BT Art Box, but I also really enjoy using the one from Loctite. And this just actually is just regular super glue. And so now I'm going to go in with my acrylic application. Again, I am going to be using my acrylic powder from Agalore & Co. This is in the color Chai. I absolutely fell in love with this color when I swatched it during my haul. And so yeah, y'all, let's get into this acrylic application. I'm also going to be going in with my Young Nails Monomer as well as um finally you guys i have graduated and i feel comfortable and confident enough to go in with my young nails acrylic brush and i'm going to be using the young nails acrylic sculptor this brush did come in my um ultimate pro kit and i did um break in the brush i was watching one of my nail sisters carrie over at i nails and she um she did a great video on how to break a brush in and so i followed those steps and so my brush has been sitting for a few days and I'm ready for my application y'all so I'm really excited for this acrylic application as well as using this acrylic brush it's gonna be my first time using like a real 100% Kaliski brush to do my nails and one of the first things I'm gonna do just to ensure that um, the acrylic sticks to the nails um, typically you're supposed to go in and like buff the surface of the nail tip so that it's not shiny I just am lazy and don't want to do that so I'm just gonna go over each of the nail tips with a little bit of monomer before my application and that should kind of essentially etch the nail tips so I'm just gonna go through and do that really quick and that's going to create like um, you know a sticky surface for the acrylic to adhere to so that's what I'm going in and doing really quick um, you all could go ahead and do the regular process where you go in and buff and file and level out the nail but like I said I'm lazy so I just don't want to do that <laughs> Okay, so first I want to show you all how I pick up an acrylic bead, okay? When working with acrylics, I do follow Young Nails um, technique and I think that it's super helpful and really good. So what I am going to do is I'm going to go ahead and saturate my acrylic brush. I'm going to tap over to the side one time and then I'm going to go in and pick up the bead with three bounces. So I'll go one, two, three. So I picked up my bead and that's how it's setting up. Next, when I go in with my acrylic application, I do tend to apply it at the smile line first, like so, and set the bead down. And then um, I will go ahead and, oh, this is more of a runnier bead than I was expecting. Okay. I think I left too much monitor in it, but yeah. So then you'll go ahead and um, just swipe down to go ahead and apply the acrylic to the entire length of the nail, okay? like so and actually let me zoom out so I don't miss anything because these nails are pretty long you see I think I'm gonna try to work like this because the nails are super long and I don't want to miss anything <laughs> 
So yeah, again, I'm gonna go in and just kind of wipe my brush off a little bit and I'm gonna go in and pick up another bead. I think I'm gonna drain a little bit more. One, two, three. This is how the bead picks up. And then I'm gonna go ahead and set that down at the cuticle again. Oops. Okay, this is more so how I was used to this acrylic working. It kind of sets, it kind of stays where you put it and then you move it and then it levels out. So that's what I was trying to do with that first bead, but I think I made it too wet. So I'm just gonna try to um, bring it back here. I'm not doing good at like keeping my sides smooth. Y'all bear with me. Y'all know I'm still a beginner and I'm also not used to working with nail tips this long. <laughs> uh, you would think it would be the same, eh? but it's not. So let me try to keep the sidewalls clean. I'm gonna try to keep my sidewalls clean because y'all know I do not um, enjoy filing. So let me try my best to not have to go in and fix that too much. Okay. And then let me just smooth down the surface of the nail. Okay. And then try to keep my sidewalls clean. Okay. Yeah, this is, uh, it's, it's, it's happening. We're, we're doing it. We're doing it. Extra, extra long nails are in the building, okay? I'm trying, y'all. I'm trying. All right, so that's beat number two. Now I'm going to go in with beat number three. I will say this acrylic brush is pretty amazing to work with. One, two, three. I think it holds way more acrylic than uh, what I'm used to, which is, I mean, way more monomer than what I'm used to, which is pretty nice. So now I'm going to go in at the cuticle area, and again, I want to try to get my cuticle nice and tight. So let's see if I can zoom in. I'm just really trying my best to just work that product right up to the cuticle, but not touching the cuticle like so. And if I do get any on the cuticle, I'll go around and just wipe it away. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that wipe away. Okay. Yeah, this brush is a lot better. Wow. Okay. Good brushes make a difference, okay? Good brushes make a difference. Okay, I'm feeling pretty good about that. Come over over here, try to smooth that up. Okay. That looks good. Okay, happy people. So at this point, I am just using the brush with a little bit of monomer in it to continue to straighten out the side walls. Um, I want to focus really good on getting the shape right so I can have very minimal filing. Okay, so that's what it's looking like so far. Now I feel like I feel like the shaping it's it's looking on the flat side. So I'll need to go in with like one more bead right here to help build the structure of the nail. So I'm gonna go in and try to do that. Here when I pick up the bead, I'm holding it a little bit longer on the brush to try and let the acrylic set a little bit before I put it down so it's not so runny. So here you see me setting it down um, and whatever monomer is left on the brush, I'm using that to kind of get rid of whatever dry powder might still be remaining. Um, I did find that I had to kind of find my, I had to kind of relearn how to use this acrylic from my original swatch video. Um, so when I originally swatched these acrylics, I used my Josh Love acrylic brush, um, and I believe that's a synthetic brush, and so it doesn't actually hold as much monomer in it. And because now I'm using like a higher quality brush, um, it holds the amount of monomer that I think a brush is supposed to hold. And so then my beads ended up being a little bit wetter than what I was used to um, from you know my original swatch video. So again, I had to relearn how to work with this acrylic. Um, so definitely having higher quality brushes do make a difference um, when you're learning how to do your acrylic application I would almost say that it's probably better to go ahead and invest in a higher quality acrylic brush because now I feel like all of the acrylic powders that I've used previous to this um, I'm probably gonna have to relearn how to use them because now I'm gonna be working with a better brush so yeah I just wanted to make sure I mentioned that to you all um, for those of you who are also beginners to acrylic okay so I feel like that looks a lot better. I do think I want to go in and build up the apex just a little bit more. And then I think I'll be all done, y'all. So I feel like at this point, I was finally starting to get the hang of the liquid to powder ratio with the Agalor & Co. Um, acrylic powder, as well as using my Young Nails brush. Um, again, using a, a higher quality brush does definitely make a difference for with how your acrylics apply 
and the application. So I'm learning two new products at the same time here. I feel like that looks pretty good. The last thing I'm gonna do is actually just build up this structure right here one more time. So I do feel like I've been on this nail for forever, but I will say that doing acrylic nails does take time and you have to go in and use as many beads as you feel necessary in order to get the right shape and structure. Now sculpting long acrylic nails is hard. I'm gonna tell you that, okay? Cause it's like, you gotta, it's, like it's so long <laughs> alrighty so this is what this first nail is looking like I do feel like I need to add a little bit more structure right here but I'm gonna come back to this nail and fix it here shortly so this first nail has set up pretty nicely that's what the apex is looking like um, again I do think having a good brush helps a lot I think had I tried this with one of my cheapy acrylic brushes I would have been regretting that so now I'm gonna go in with my middle finger here and again I probably need to stay zoomed out quite a bit just so that you all can really see what I'm doing and so I don't have to break my back because <laughs> this angle is kind of uncomfortable, but we're going to get it done. So I'm going to go in and saturate my brush, tap off once, bounce, one, two, three, pick up a generous size bead. This is how it is setting up. I'm going to go in and I'm going to set that bead down right here at that smile line or at the, where the, I'm sorry, where the nail meets the, where the nail tip meets the natural nail. And then I just want to try to keep the acrylic on the nail itself and just work that all the way down the length of the nail. And I think for my first layer of acrylic here, it's really just to add that color and make sure acrylic is covering the entire nail. So I'm just gonna go ahead and swipe all the product down, oops, like so. And really, I'm gonna try to keep my side walls clean too because Y'all know I don't like filing, so I'm really not trying to go in and have to do too much filing. Okay, and so yeah, I'm just gonna continue to do that here, like so. So that's the first layer here, right? Then next, I'm gonna go in and pick up another generous bead and set it at the cuticle. I'm gonna go in with one, two, three, that's my pickup. And I'm actually gonna just hold it here for a second because I wanna work with the dryer bead at the cuticle. I don't want it to be too wet to where I have to chase it and it runs. So I'm just gonna hold it for a second. I'm gonna go ahead and set it down like so. All right, and you see it's not moving too much and then I'm just gonna work that product towards that cuticle area. And I hope you all can see what I'm doing. Try to get a little closer. But yeah, I'm gonna work it towards the cuticle like so. And again, it's not too runny so then I'm able to move it where I need it to be. I'm gonna work it back, work it back, work it back, work it back. Like so. And when I feel like I got it nice and tight to the cuticle, then that's why I'm not worry about working the rest of the bead. Okay, so that looks good to me. Well, actually, I wanna try to get this a little bit closer too. Like so. And then now I'm gonna work the rest of the bead down. What's nice is that this is like a medium setting powder, so it doesn't set really fast. So it really does give you time to work on it. So I'm realizing that my brush is too long and I'm hitting my camera. <laughs> the nails are too long and now my brush is long and so I'm hitting my camera. So yeah, anywho, the product is set slower so it gives you a lot of time to work with it, which is really nice. Now I'm gonna go in with another bead and try to build up that um, structure a little bit more. Okay. I'm gonna go in and just set it down, okay? And then I'm kinda gonna work it backwards first so that it kinda levels the product out. And then I'm gonna take it from this side. I need to work with dryer beads I'm seeing already. And work that product all the way down. I'm gonna go in with one more bead. Again, I wanna build up that structure a little bit more. Okay, happy people. So when doing extra, extra long nails, you will need to use a lot of product, um, especially if you're sculpting the nails um, as I'm doing it here um, in this video. But I found that I just had to work with a lot more beads and a lot more product with a lot more monomer. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I'm just going to continue to take my time building it out. Um, I don't even know how many beads I ended up using per nail because um, I just was going based off of um, 
the shape of the nail and how quickly I was able to build it up. Um, I It makes me wonder though, now watching this video, if working with a larger acrylic brush would speed up my application, especially if I'm doing um, extra, extra long nails. I feel like this brush works well for maybe my, my medium to long nails, but for extra, extra long nails, it might be better to have a bigger brush. So by the third nail, I decided to try applying the acrylic as I saw on the Shop Agalore's TikTok and Instagram, where she kind of sets the bead down and kind of uh, drags it down a little bit before picking the brush up off of it. And I feel like that did help a little bit with um, maneuvering the acrylic. So this is me demonstrating how I set the bead down again, which is slightly different than what I'm used to, but I actually ended up flooding the cuticles which I was so sad about. So I'm gonna show you all how I cleaned it up here. I'm just taking the end of the brush, making sure it's to a nice little point there, and then going in between the sidewall and the nail and just removing any of the acrylic that it may have gotten on the cuticle and sidewalls. And I really found that working with this brush helped me to be able to easily do that. So I was really tempted to cut this part of the video out, but again, I really wanted to leave in um, the process of sculpting extra extra long acrylic nails i think it's important to see that you know doing nails of this length uh, does take a little bit of time i mean this is really like two hours worth of footage that hopefully i can get down to about you know 25 minutes um that's including like nail art and things like that but you know it does take a while actually to sculpt nails um of this length um so yeah it's interesting it was interesting really doing this set i learned a lot about um, liquid to powder ratio and different uh, application techniques um, to really get down the application process and so by the last two nails I was able to get it fairly quickly but each nail took me 15 minutes to do all right y'all so I am super duper proud of this nail okay I think it turned out really good um, although I had some flooding at the cuticle I feel like I was able to clean it up and I have a decent sized apex I feel at least for the length of the nail so I don't want to get too close to it because I want to mess it up. But y'all can see out of the three nails that I just sculpted, this one definitely is the best one. And so that just goes to show that the more you practice it, the better you're going to get at it. And I'm also learning the liquid to powder ratio, um, as well as how long to actually hold that bead on the brush before I set it down so that the acrylic isn't too runny. So yeah, I am going to go ahead and do my other two nails off camera. And I'm going to be right back and show you guys how my full acrylic set looks, okay? Okay, so this is what the nails look like after all the acrylic has been applied. I think I did okay with the application. Um, like I said, I did do my pinky and thumb off camera. And I did have to go tend to my little one for a few hours. And so... But yeah, um, this is what we got so far. I do need to go in and file shape and buff the nail. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I do have my dust collector here, which I actually probably need to clean. So this was that hack that I showed you guys using the lint dryer. All that dust is on here. I'm just gonna toss that and do a new one. I also have my Young Nails 100 file. I absolutely love using this file when I'm um, filing and shaping my nails with acrylic. And so first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and crisp in the edges of my nails and then I'll go through with the filing, okay? Now I'm gonna go in with my five and one carbide bit. Y'all, it's hard to pick stuff up. Okay, but now I'm gonna go in with my five and one carbide bit and clean up and debulk the nails. We go in at 10,000 RPM. Okay, happy people. So while I am filing, shaping, and buffing my nails. Um, I wanted to ask you all if you would be interested in me bringing back an old series that I had on my channel. It was called Tales from the Peace Corps. In case you all don't know, I am a returned Peace Corps volunteer. I served in a small country in Eastern Europe called Moldova. And I was there for two years and I went through quite a lot of interesting experiences to say the least. I did uh, business advising while I was there and so I wanted to know if you all might be interested in me doing like maybe some story times here and there while I'm doing my nails. Um, and that's just a way for me to kind of bring that series back while also still staying relevant to the type of content that I'm now producing. Um, so let me know what you all think about that and I will get to 
telling you all about all of my previous experiences that I've had while I was in the Peace Corps. Um, I do also um, have a playlist. I think it's like six or seven videos that talks about um, you know what I did while I was there and even one of the videos I, I'm actually speaking in Romanian which is the language that I had to learn in order to do my job there. So yeah let me know what you all think about that if that might be of interest to you. Alrighty, so this is what the nails look like after they've been filed, shaped, and buff. Y'all, let me tell y'all, that was a workout. My arms, my back, and my shoulders hurt, okay? That took me about an hour to file, shape, and buff into place. I do feel like this nail is still a little bit wide, but you know what? We, ju we just gonna roll with that because um, I'm tired, okay? So now I'm gonna go ahead and go in with my nail art. I think I first want to top coat all the nails um just to kind of see what i'm working with and how i want to go in with my nail art so i am going to do that first i'm going to go ahead and go in with my pretty diva top coat okay so this is what all the nails look like after they have been top coated okay happy people it is a few days later and let me tell y'all right now this set almost did not get finished it has been a crazy last couple of days but I am going to see this through so I'm going to go ahead and finish out this set. So I did want to go in with some luxury foils here and I'm just going to cut out just a little bit of the foil. I think what I'm going to do is end up having to be like a sideways foil situation and I think I'm going to do that on the ring and the um, pinky finger. This is going to be a really simple design, nothing too extravagant. I'm going to be going in with my McCart foil glue and I'm going to just go ahead and just kind of apply it how I feel like I see fit and once it's applied you'll go ahead and cure for 60 seconds then you'll let it cool for 30 and after it's cooled for 30 I'm not sure why there's wrinkling on here but yeah after it's cool for 30 then you'll want to go in with your foil and apply it to the nail so I'm gonna apply it like so okay and um, after you apply it, you just want to rub up and down and then side to side. And with foils, you want to keep rubbing and keep rubbing and keep rubbing until you cannot rub anymore. So that is what I'm going to do here. And I do have my tool to help me only because I have long nails. Typically, I'll just, I would just rub it with my hands. And you'll keep rubbing until the foil starts to naturally separate from the nail. Okay, so this nail didn't transfer all that great because there was some wrinkling over on this side of the nail. I'm not sure why. I think I maybe I applied too much of it, but as you all can see, the transfer was really good right around here. So we'll see what I can do to maybe cover that up. But yeah, I'm going to go ahead and repeat that process on the pinky here. And I'm going to cure for 60 seconds. I think I want to make sure I don't apply too much foil glue. It just needs to be a thin layer of it. It's been cured for 60 and cooled for 30. This one, as you can see, it has a smooth application. So again, on this one, it just messed up because I applied too much of the foil glue, but we'll still keep trucking along here. So it's been about 30 seconds. Now I'm gonna go ahead and apply that to the nail. You wanna set it down. And I'm gonna use my silicone tool. You just rub up and down the length of the nail first and then side to side making sure to really give some good pressure to it so that the, the, the foil can transfer properly. Beautiful. Okay, that one transferred a lot better as you can see. Looks good y'all, it looks good. So now I'm gonna go in on this hand and I wanna apply a chunky charm. And y'all, for the first time ever, I'm gonna be doing a spinning charm, okay? I've been dying to do a spinning charm on my nails, and so I am gonna go in with this big old teddy bear, which is also Gucci, okay? And then I have my little spinner here. So I'm gonna apply the uh, 
the flat side that's the widest to the back of my charm first and I do have my gooseneck lamp that I'm going to be using to cure it into place and I'm going to do that with just a little bit of my rhinestone glue I am going to use the one from Beatles and I'm going to go in and I'm going to just place a small dot of the rhinestone glue on the back of the charm like so and just make sure that it is secured on there like so and yeah, that's perfect and then what I'll do is I'll take my lamp here and I'll turn it on okay and then I'll just hold it underneath the light here and let it cure for 60 seconds y'all this is gonna be so cute oh my gosh so now that's been cured into place and now I'm gonna go ahead and adhere that charm to my nail I am gonna apply it just kind of close to the cuticle like so it's gonna be like maybe like right here so what I'm gonna do is I'm still gonna have my flash curing lamp here ready to go and I think what I want to do is I think I want to apply it to the back of the charm itself just so that I don't apply too much glue okay and I'm just gonna apply it on that spinner and then what I'll do is turn my lamp on and then I'm gonna try to place it exactly where I want it to be I think I want it to go like right about here on the nail I'm gonna come under oops, and try to cure it into place Getting it. There we go. And once I feel like that's cured enough, I am going to go ahead and put it underneath my big lamp. Baby, the teddy bear is on here. How cute. Okay. And so now on my index finger, I want to apply just my cute little pom pom on here. So I'm just going to apply some rhinestone glue to the back of here, like so. Just need a small dot, like so. And I'm just gonna apply that right to the nail, like maybe like right here. Okay, and I'm gonna let that cure in place. Alrighty, so that has been applied. So all you gotta do when you wanna use it is just pop it on the nail like so. How, <laughs> yo, how cute is she right now? Okay, all right, so let me finish this set up. I do wanna add just a little bit of bling to my set. So I am gonna go in with, I'm just gonna apply simple bling to the nail because y'all know my sets ain't complete without them, okay? And I just have these really cute, like kind of champagne looking rhinestones that I thought would be really perfect for this set. The top coat will help even out that, um, that surface of the nail that I was unable to get while I was applying my foils. Alrighty, so this is what we got so far. And then I think on the thumb, I just wanna do something simple. I think I'm gonna just add a Gucci charm. So I do have these stickers right here. I do think I'm gonna go in and add Gucci to the side of this sticker right here. And add a charm, a big old Gucci charm, and then I think we'll be all done here. Be nice and simple. And I'm just gonna add rhinestone glue. So for this charm and how I applied, I'm just gonna add rhinestone glue to the back of it, just so that I don't have to go through and top coat my nail again. I'm liking how she looking. I'm gonna go ahead and just add some cuticle oil to these crusty cuticles and we gonna get into the finished look, okay? All right, you guys. Ain't she cute? OMG, y'all. This is a very, very extra set, and baby Gucci is in the house, okay? I am loving how this turned out. Y'all know I got my little spinning charm over here, baby. That's the star of the show right there. You see the Gucci teddy bear? Gucci, okay? Hey, Gucci, okay? <laughs> Y'all know I'm super extra. This is my first time doing like a little pom-pom on the nail. I will say it is kind of big, but it is super cute as well. This is also my first time doing spinning charms and I'm really loving it. It's just so much fun. Like, look at that. <laughs> so much fun, y'all. Absolutely love how this look turned out. And this is what we got going on on the thumb here. I just kept it nice and simple because baby, we had enough activity going on over here, okay? But ain't she just, oh 
Oh, she cute, okay? When I was working with these acrylics, I noticed that the bead was a little bit wetter and the acrylic performed slightly different than it did when I swatched it. And that's mainly because I was using a higher quality brush, okay? So this um, Young Nail Artistic Sculptor brush, I had a really easy time being able to lay the acrylic with it. And um, because it's a higher quality brush, this is a Kalinske brush, it held more of the monomer. And so the bead wasn't as dry as it was in my swatch video when I initially picked them up. So I did notice that when I was laying my acrylic with this brush. This was the brush that I used during the swatch video and this is not a Kalinske brush and so it didn't hold as much monomer. And so that's why there was a big difference in how the acrylic performed for me when I was laying it. And so, yeah, I just wanted to make sure I pointed that out to you guys, but yeah. So yes, let me know what you all think about my set. How did I do with my sculpting? It's kind of hard to tell because my nails got a lot going on. How did I do with sculpting? And baby, how did I do with this design? Okay, it speaks for itself, does it not? Hey! Okay, if you all are curious about this set I have on here, I am gonna leave a full tutorial for it linked down in the description box below. So it is about three or four days later since I've done this set, and I thought it'd be kinda cool to actually show you guys what my pop-off removal process looks like after I do my sets. I did go in and do the rose peel off method with these and I just wanna show you all how good those work. Um, I did just remove a set over here, that set that you all saw me have on at the beginning of the video. I had that set on for two weeks and I just popped it off and so I just wanted to show you all that you can either wear your sets for two weeks or two days and you can still have the same easy removal process. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So this little pop ball I'm gonna take off. And the first thing you wanna do is with this pop off method, you definitely wanna make sure you soak your nails for at least five minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and let these nails soak for a good five minutes and then I'll be back to pop them off, okay? And when you're soaking the nails, one thing I like to do is I kind of just press my nails down on the tips a little bit just to kind of help that warm water get in between the crevices for an easy pop off. It has been about three minutes actually and I'm gonna just see how easy these are to pop off. So you'll wanna go in on the sides of each nail and just kind of break that seal. Now this is fresh acrylic I applied, so the acrylic might have gotten sealed in there a little bit. Y'all, I'm so sad. My camera went dead right as I popped the nail off. So yeah, it just it just popped off really easily. So let me do that again on my next finger. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this nail here. Now, like I said, it's fresh acrylic, so they might not pop off as easily because the acrylic, I think, got on that peel off base. But I could just show you guys. You see, it's actually just pulling right off the nail. You see that? And then it comes just, it comes right off. Then I'll do the same thing on this nail. I'll just pull, pull, pull. And you wanna pull gently, you guys. But yeah, it just pops right on off. You see? And what's nice about this method, like I said, is if I wanted to wear them longer, I could, but they pop off super easily. And I'm gonna do that again with the thumbnail. If you feel like it's too tough, you can just come around and break that seal. Like so. Yeah, this acrylic is sealed up in here, okay? Yeah, these would have definitely lasted two weeks, like no problem. Another thing you can do too is go around and file the edges so that it's to break the seal. So I'm gonna come through on the edge over here and just file just to break the seal that the acrylic made to that, that peel off base. So like so, and then over here I'll go ahead and do the same. And that's gonna help it a lot. There we go. And now the nail is gonna pop right on off. As you can see. No damage to the natural nail. And this nail, as you can see, is also just gonna pop right on off. In order to get rid of the residue here, all you have to do is go through and just roll that peel off base coat off of your natural nail. And then as you all can see, there is no actual damage to my natural nails. And after you apply some cuticle oil, your nails are like new again. I found that doing this primer with the peel off base and the matte top coat seems to work really well for me. Um, and just as long as I'm soaking in hot water before I pop it off, I normally have a, a pretty easy time popping my nails off. I really enjoy using my peel off method to be able to wear my sets for either as long as I want or as short as I want and then be able to you know get on to my next set so yeah just wanted to show you all what that removal process was because I don't show that really often I do upload every Tuesday Thursday and Saturday Thursdays in particular are my nail therapy Thursday premieres where I tune in live with you all as you watch me do my nails and if you all like what you saw here definitely stick around join the happy family I'd love to have you and as always you guys leave some love in the comments down below 
and I'll see you in my next video. I hope y'all have a wonderful, awesome, spectacular day. Bye!